about three years ago, I split up with my last girlfriend, and we split up roughly around the time she fucked somebody else. And <laughs> <laughs> roughly in the same vicinity of time. And I was hurt, but I couldn't, I mean, I've cheated before a fair bit, and I've been cheated on a lot, probably more than I know. I have played this scene more than Olivier has played Shakespeare. So if I'm going to say something to her, I can't come from a position of moral superiority. So I asked her, I said, why? And she says, honestly? I said, yeah, you made me do it. <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> you were never here. You were always absent. You were always gone. And your absences made me feel insecure, unworthy, and it forced me to get validation from someone I didn't even like. I said, let me see if I understand. I made you fuck somebody while I wasn't even present. <laughs> what an unusual superpower. <laughs> Is that what you're going to tell your friends? I just want to know in case I bump into your friends at a party and they shoot me bitch looks and I'll be in on the joke. I can go, yep, I am such a prick. I messed up. I deserve your scorn. I was jogging through the forest one morning and 50 yards away, I saw a meteor that had recently crash landed. I could still feel the heat and the radiation, but I felt compelled to go up to it. I tore off a piece, stupid me, I ate it, and <laughs> all of a sudden, I had the ability to make people fuck one another, provided they didn't like one another, and I wasn't present. <laughs> and I was so excited with this new power, the first and only person I could think of to test it on was my girlfriend. <laughs> By the way, if any of you have recently had unwanted sex, it's probably my fault. <laughs> I mean, I was the other day, I gave a lady a compliment, and I realized that British people's problem with compliments is they can't tell if you're slagging them off or not. You know, they can't tell. A buddy of mine, he was wearing his hat the other day, and I said, hey, bro, you look snappy in that hat. And he was like, and I said, I'm American. I have no subtext. <laughs> and he went, oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a party one night, and uh, I was minding my own business. And a young lady walked up, and she says, Reginald D. Hunter. I said, yes, ma'am. I heard you have issues with women. I said, really? Which ones? <laughs> you know, issues. I said, no, ma'am, I don't. Uh, are you saying I blame women for global warming or Greece not having no money or uh, what you saying? <laughs> Probably some woman broke your heart and then you just blamed all women after that. I said, oh, so then you thought it would be helpful to me if you came over and was dismissive to me about my issues. I wasn't being dismissive. Yes, ma'am, you were. You, you walked up and gave me a piece of gossip and then gave me the summation of what it's supposed to be. You haven't asked me anything about myself. It was dismissive. You take that back. I was not being dismissive. I said, okay, maybe I'm misjudging. I have had a drink. And who knows? Maybe your period's on. And <laughs> and she looked at me like, <gasps> and I said, you don't like it because it's dismissive. 